What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for joining us on another episode of Robert Garcia Unfiltered. We're back to just me and my dad. Uh, Beva is currently in Saudi Arabia. She's working with Golden Boy. They sent her out there to cover this weekend's fights with Jose Ramirez, Surdo Ramirez, Oscar Duarte, William Cepeda, the big card that Golden Boy has in Saudi. Um, so it'll be just us two today. Uh, we'll be covering the top ranked card in from Norfolk, Virginia from this past Friday night. And then obviously Saturday night's event with uh, Bam Rodriguez and Jerome Boots Ennis. Um, we'll get started with a uh, top ranks show on Friday. Just a quick rundown of, of the guys that were on the undercard. We're not going to get too much into detail with, with a lot of these guys. Um, we saw Rai Salim come back um, after suffering a loss, which was, I want to say, last early last year in the summer against Sad Sam Goodman. He lost split decision, hadn't been back in the ring for quite some time, came back and picked up a unanimous decision win. A former 122 pound, uh, I think he had an in interim title um, at 122 pounds. Ray Salim, uh, junior lightweight prospect, Robert Merriweather improved to 8 0 with three KOs. Uh, Troy Isley picked up a win over Tyler Howard, uh, picked it up with oh, via unanimous decision, 10 rounds. Um, the event was kind of promoted and, you know, sold as the uh, DB3 event. Uh, Keyshawn Davis and his three brothers. Uh, their sisters sang the national anthem, which was cool. So it was like a whole fam family atmosphere kind of thing. Uh, his brother, Keon Davis, uh, picked up a unanimous decision win in his pro debut. Kelvin Davis uh, picked up another decision win. Uh, I believe he fights eight rounds already, 140 pounds. Um, but what we want to get into is Abdullah Mason, one of the hottest young prospects in boxing right now, one of my favorite prospects. Um, he picked up a second round TKO versus veteran Johan Vasquez, who had a record of 26 and 5 with 21 knockouts, um, a lot of punching power. Uh, Kish, I mean, uh, Abdullah suffered, I believe it was the first knockdown, official knockdown of his career. He got dropped twice in the first round. He also dropped Johan Vasquez in the first round and then stopped him in the second round. Um, what did you think of Abdullah of Abdullah's uh, performance against you know a veteran opponent with some punching power? You know, before before this uh, Friday night, I think uh, he was probably the one, that, the prospect everybody was talking about, and and uh, you know, and due to this knockdowns, maybe some people are gonna think, well, maybe he doesn't have a chin, or maybe he's, you know, he's not ready yet. But but there's so many fighters that get dropped early in their career, and that doesn't mean that they're not gonna be able to make it or be good. It, the a lot of boxing critics and, and, and boxing people, you know, we do question that, oh, well, he's already got dropped. And that's the first thing everybody can say, well, he already got dropped twice. But, uh, but fighters, fighters have to go through that, you know, to learn, to learn, to be, to get better, to, to work on, on, on their defense, on their confidence. Maybe he's already too confident that he's, he's blowing, he's blasting everybody, everybody uh, out and, and looking sensational. And this time, you know, he got, caught twice and got dropped so it's a learning experience for him i think this is only gonna make him better i think this will only make him better i don't i don't i don't question does he have a chin or not i have i think uh a lot of young fighters uh early in their careers that they've, they've got dropped you know but they they it's it just to to make them better and to learn and and to to know that uh you know sometimes he goes in too cold. Maybe he's a little too confident. Maybe he doesn't take it serious. You know, this is a learning experience. I think it'll it'll help him. I I'm not I'm not uh, worried about him. You know, still. You know, I think he's still the prospect that everybody thinks he is. I think he's still the one of the most talented fighters out there. Uh, young fighters that are, that's out there, and uh, and and he's gonna continue proving. It. Yeah, you mentioned this happens a lot to guys. I don't think people realize how often this happens to like some of the top level guys um the only difference now is that because everything is streamed everything is you know people really get to see the whole development of a fighter from pro debut to world champ to everything before it wasn't as easy to to know about you know uh you know let's just go back to mikey you know he got dropped early in his career against uh well, i don't know i don't know the guy's name maybe the colombian guy yeah, he got hit with an overhand right. Mikey was pulling back and he got dropped. And it was like a six, eight round fight. He got dropped. He got up and ended up winning the fight. Um, Brandon went, went through that too, where he got dropped two times with the, in the same round, I, I think, uh, from some body shots. Um, it's just stuff that happens. You know, we've seen, 
guys like Canelo get stunned. Errol Spence. I remember when Mikey was going to fight Errol, there was pe people that kept sending me a video of Errol when he got stunned in a fight with like a left hook or right hook or something early on in his career. It's just something that happens to these guys. I think people overreact to, oh, now he can't take a punch. He's got a glass jaw. He's See, he was exposed. Um, and they forget that he's only 20 years old. They're moving him faster than most people. He's he's fighting eight rounds. His opponent was 26 and five with 21 knockouts. That's a big puncher. Um, and one of the main things that I think people need to realize too is that it happened in the first round. When you when the fight starts, that's when, like you said, maybe he goes in there a little overconfident because the first round, you're still a little bit cold. You're still trying to you know figure things out. And with a big puncher like that, maybe he needs to learn to 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 take his time to, you know, um maybe get in on the inside once he starts to slow down his opponents, not right from the op opening bell. Do you think they're moving him a little bit too fast? Because he's still 20 years old. Um, a little bit too fast. Or what would you do from here on out? Do you think he takes like a little, maybe a step back in his, in, 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 in them rushing him? You know, he's already fighting eight rounds. Um, do you think they take a little step back or where do you, what do you think top rank and his management and stuff go from here? Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt him. But, but yeah, if, he, if they take a little step back, it's not going to hurt him. He's he's still very young. And, uh, and uh, you know, this opponent was solid, great power. So it was a great, uh, great uh, experience, you know, especially that he got dropped. But I don't think it's it's going to really affect him. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't really argue if they, if they take a little step back, maybe one or two fights just to, just to slow it down a little bit, a little bit more uh, than the way they had him. I think the way he was going, he was going to be probably ten rounds in the next two fights, and then you know, by twenty one, maybe fight for the world title. I don't know that. Maybe that was that was uh, the plan, but it doesn't hurt to to slow it down a little and then take a step back. Uh, the kid's got a bright future. The kid's only twenty one, so so he's 20, still 20. 20, 20. He's still twenty, so so he you know, there's no rush. There's no rush. Um, his team should 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 realize that should know that there's no rush to this boxing. You don't want to rush a fighter. Sometimes you make mistakes when you rush them, and uh, and they don't want to do that with with him. You know the kid is great. The kid could be a superstar. The kid could be the future in boxing. So so let's you know take a step back. You know one or two fights, just picking the right opponent and then bringing them back slowly again. I still personally think he's the best prospect. Obviously, you know, whenever I say stuff like that, it's obviously not including guys from our gym or guys that we're really high on in our own gym. Correct. But from, you know, most, most, you know, circles and most people in boxing would agree that he's probably the, 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 the prospect with the most, with the highest upside. The only thing is he is in, in a very deep division. He's in a very tough division, 135 pounds. You got the, you know, top, obviously the top level guys with, you know, uh, tank and Shakur and these guys and the next level guys, um, like, you know, Raymond and fucking, we're going to get into Keyshawn right now. Then you got the younger, Camarón Cepeda. Then you got the younger guys like Floyd, Floyd Schofield, Abdullah Mason, all these guys. It's a stacked division. I, you know, um, for him being, you know, such a young kid, uh, the, the pace that they're moving on, I do think it's, it, it would be a little bit better to kind of slow it down a little bit, let him get his man strength a little bit more and then go from there. Cause I still think he's the best prospect in boxing. Um, 135 pounds, the main event, Keyshawn Davis, Obviously, it's a homecoming fight for Keyshawn. Uh, he's fighting in Norfolk, Virginia, where uh, Pernell Whitaker is from. So they kind of, you know, played into that a little bit with uh, Keyshawn's walkout. Uh, I guess he walked out with a marching band. The marching band was from the high school that Pernell Whitaker attended. Um, so they played into, you know, the whole, uh, you know, Sweet Pea, Keyshawn thing. Um, obviously, the DB3, his sister sang the national anthem. It was a big, it was a big deal for Keyshawn, for his family. Um, they sold over 10,000 tickets, um, but the day of the weigh-in, they got a little surprised when his opponent came in uh, like six and a half pounds over the, the the lightweight limit, came in at 141 pounds. Um, what did you think, before we actually get into the fight itself, what did you think about Keyshawn's decision to still fight and not even, he didn't second guess it. He just said, nope, we're still fighting um, because it takes... it takes something special or something like you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself to not even second guess and not even you know um he went out there and, and performed the way he did but the fact that he took the fight shows that he's ready to be the main event for for cards like this what did you think about his uh his mentality you know what uh i think i think that's what that's what that's what fighters need that's the mentality fighters need to have but very few do very very few think like that uh 
you know, fighting in his hometown in front of his crowd, his brothers on the card, his uh, everything's already planned out. The band, uh, thousands and thousands of fans, friends. Uh, he's not gonna, you know, the guy, his opponent came in like at, what was it, six pounds? Mm-hmm. That's a big weight difference. That's a lot of pounds. Uh, other coach, uh, there's, we've seen it before. You know, two three pounds that they cancel fights because of that. This guy said no this is my event i ain't gonna you know this guy's not gonna fuck it up for me this guy's not gonna ruin my event and i'm gonna show the world that's what uh that's what shows what you really are Keisha showed that he's that he's the real deal he's you know he's uh he's ready for for the big fights the, his performance in his home hometown crowd with the with his opponent being six pounds overweight and and all that he never, I never, I bet you he never questioned, man, should I, should I still take the fight? Should I cancel the fight? He would have, it would have been, it, it, you know, it just wouldn't have, you know, nobody would have blamed him. But yeah. and for him, for himself, it would have been a big, a big fail for his family, for his crowd, for his friends, for his family, for his brothers on the card, everything. I think he did the right thing. I I think he did what, 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 uh, what very few would do. And and that that showed me a lot of respect. You know, I've had conversations with him before about him and Raymond the future big fights, and I've told him you'll be there, but not yet. But he proved that he's ready for the big dogs now. The way he fought, he he went in there confident. He didn't he didn't go in there with that mentality of the nerve going oh, in my hometown, my crowd, my people, my fans. What if this? What if that? We seen it. We seen the last. You know, we seen it. Uh, uh, Saturday night. You know where. Maybe the crowd did affect the main event fighter. Maybe the hometown did affect, but to Keisha, it didn't. We've seen it before with other fights. I think most recently also uh, in, um, oh man, Bridges. Bridges Provis did have a good performance in his hometown. Oh, Not too long ago. Yeah, in New Orleans. Exactly. Because see, when, when you fight in your hometown, everything's on you. There's you a lot know, of you're getting. You're getting calls from from friends, relatives, credentials. Can I get tickets? Can I do this? Can I do that? And then you know you're you're you also have to be training. You also have to be taking care of so many things that there's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure. But you know, Kishan took it like 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 a veteran already. Like if he's already been in this many uh, before, and he showed that he's already deal. I I I, uh, I give him the, the support. You know. Everybody, everybody in boxing, they want to, they want to get to that point where they're the main event, or or they want to get paid the way the way a main event fighter gets paid, or they want to be in those positions. But what Keyshawn did is what main event fighters do. When you're what the the reason people bought the tickets to go to the event was to see Keyshawn. They want to see Keyshawn. You know, he's going back to his hometown. He's close to getting a world title fight. They went out. They supported. So the whole event is on his back. The whole event is on his back, and for him to take the fight, I think showed a lot. I think he's 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 a you know a star in the making in boxing. Um, the performance itself, Gustavo Lemos had in his in his last fight at 140 pounds fought Richardson Hitchens. Um, I I believe he beat Richardson Hitchens. Uh, gave him a a, a really a really tough fight. Richardson Hitchens came out with the win, but like I said, I thought Gustavo Lemos beat him. Kishan stopped him in the second round, dropped him I believe three times before the ref uh waved it off. Um, I don't think there's anything there's anything left for Keyshawn to prove at 135 pounds besides getting a world title fight. Do you think uh, he gets the uh, the WBO title shot with Brinchik? Do you think he gets the IBF? Where do you think he goes? Because he called out Tank, but obviously, uh, you know, obviously Top Rank has their plans and stuff, and you know he's got to become a world champ first. Uh, what do you think is next for Keyshawn, and how do you think he does in 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 a fight against you know, let's say Brinchik? I think he will fight for the title. Uh, you know, I know that uh, you know. In the rankings, he's he's very high in the in the IPF, also very high in the in the WBO. But top rank is moving him and and Raymond also, uh, pretty much very close to each other in the rankings. So we don't know which one's going to be. We don't know if it's going to be IPF or WBO for for neither of them. But but I think that's the plan and that's the direction top rank is is looking to put them both on title fights and hopefully they both become world champions and 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 a big. Uh, uh, unification fight sometime end of, end of next year or something. That's that's my kind of guess because it looks like that's the direction Top Rank is taking. But uh, 
but yeah, you know, I, I think I think he's trying to prove that he's ready. You know, uh, I don't know, like a little over a year ago is when when I had that conversation with him, and I told him, you know, you're looking good, you're improving every time, but you're not there yet. But yeah, three, four fights later, I think he's ready now. The kid is ready. He he showed it, uh, and and he also has confidence in himself. He 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 talks what he said, you know, and you know he goes out there and does what he what he what he talks that he's gonna do, you know. So he backs it up too. I think um, you know he's he's good for for TV fights. He's good to sell fights. He's he's a character. He he you know he goes in there and 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 pushes his opponents. He you know puts a fist in the face. You know talks a lot of smack. I think he's he's, he's good for for TV. Yeah, I think he's a st- he uh, he's a star in the making. You could tell he has that he has the it factor where you know he showed that he could draw a crowd because he had the 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 ten thousand people took the fight on you know the way the way he did and then he performed the way he did. I think all that you know put it together. Um, I think you have they have Top Ring has something special and they're building something special. Um, yeah, I, I think he gets the the WBO title fight. I think he fights Brunchik. I think he would stop him. I don't think that would be too too difficult of a fight for for Keyshawn. And then like you said, then unification fights after that with you know hopefully on the other side we get raymond and some sort of title fight um you got tank you have shakur obviously he's not gonna fight shakur but i'm saying the the the, the lightweight picture is 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 uh you know obviously very talented um big names big unification fights that could possibly happen so um you know it's gonna be a good few years for the for the lightweight division with these guys coming in um that does it for the top rank show we're gonna move on to the uh matchroom card in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, Saturday night. Again, I'm going to run through the undercard a little bit. Um, we had the pro debut of Zayquin. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Zayquin Moses. Uh, he is Shakur Stevenson's uh, nephew. He had a big win over Carmel Moten in the amateurs, uh, I think, like last year. I had read that he only had like like 16 amateur fights or something before he went into that national tournament and then beat Carmel Moten in the like semifinals or something. Um, so obviously he's he's a very talented kid. He picked up a unanimous decision win. Um, we had Amo Williams who returned after his first loss. He suffered a TKO loss to Hamza Shiraz in the five versus five in Saudi Arabia. Came back and picked up a TKO in the fifth round. So good, uh, shout out to Amo Williams. Uh, Raymond Ford also picked up his first loss in that five versus five um, against Nick Ball in a very close fight that I that I don't remember if uh, exactly how he scored it, but I thought. Raymond Ford had pulled it off, if I remember correctly. Um, and he picked up a, uni- a uni- unanimous decision, went in his first fight at 130 pounds. Um, we had a big upset on the card. Khalil Cole was was uh, stopped in the ninth round by Manuel Gallegos. Manuel Gallegos coming off of his first stoppage loss to Diego Pacheco um, this past July. And he stopped Cole in the ninth round. Um, that was a good win for, for him and his team. Um, then we move on to the coming event, uh, Bam Rodriguez. Uh, stops Pedro Guevara in round three, drops him twice in the round before the wave before the ref waves it off. Um, before we get into the fight itself, um, talk to, talk a little bit about how we got to this fight because originally Bam was supposed to be fighting uh, Gallo Estrada on this card. They were supposed to have a rematch. Um, just talk to us, to us a little bit about what happened with that and how we actually ended up getting the Pedro Guevara fight. Well, the rematch was already set. You know, uh, Gallo right after the fight in June said the rematch is going to happen. And then we, we had the, we had already the, the, the final deal. Everything was done. We were supposed to fight uh, Gallo, but when I think first week of camp, first or second week of camp, uh, we, uh, we learned that, that Gallo decided to, to uh, skip the rematch and move on to 118. So then that put us in a position where, you know, there was no other champions available. There was, there was, you know, all the other champions were were already had dates. So, it, you know, there was a there was a moment where Bam just wanted to go back. You know, was gonna go back home and 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 not fight uh, because there was nothing that was really gonna motivate him. But you know, uh, we got a call from Matchroom saying that we had to do our mandatory. That if, if we were not unifying, that the WBC was kind of pushing for the mandatory. Uh, the mandatory was. The interim champion Pedro Guevara and uh, and uh, you know I think that's what pushed Bam. You know I I, I did tell Bam, look Bam, uh, I know this kind of it might, it might not give you a lot of excitement or anything, but but you know we don't want the WBC to pull off something that you know like they could they could do it. You know they could do you know put you 
champion and recess if you don't want to fight and then you know make you fight just bullshit just you know Pedro we want to fight somebody else for the title and and you have to fight the winner you know it, it could happen they could put they could do they've done stuff like that before and and we want to go through that you know you're the champion and if it's a mandatory let's defend our title against the mandatory you know what um after once we learned you know that it was going to be Pedro Guevara I don't know if you know people might might think we're we're we over we're exaggerating but I didn't know who Pedro Guevara was uh you know I I looked him up after that that's when I started looking him up former champion he was a champion of 108 but before that I didn't I had no idea who he was I didn't know who he was he was you know the weight the small weight classes like and, and it's just the way boxing is. People don't really pay too much attention to those divisions. So I don't know. But when I looked him up, I said, hey, that, this kid's solid. He just had a recently, I heard about his win. I never, I didn't see the fight either, but I heard about his win against Maloney. Then obviously we, we went back to see the fights and, you know, tough kid. So Bam prepared himself very well. You know, Bam, uh, Bam said it uh, last night that now that he's up there in the, in the top four, five pound for pound uh, list, you know, it, he needs to, he needs to, you know, stay there and prove, you know, and, and show the crowd that he belongs there. So he's not, he's taking every fight very seriously because of that too, because if, if they're, if they're putting him in the top four or five uh, pound for pound uh, list, he needs to prove, he needs to fight like that. And, uh, and that's what motivates him too. So, you know, he, he prepared himself. He, he was, we had great sparring, you know, you know, we had great sparring. He, uh, he's, he was focused. He did, Everything right, the weight, everything, everything went as planned, and uh, and his performance showed it. The actual fight itself, uh, Pedro Guevara. You said you didn't know too much about him, but he had lost. He had, he had four losses, I believe, in in his career, or uh, four, three or four. Four uh, losses. All of them either split decision or majority decisions. He had never been stopped. Um, talk to us a little bit about how Bam made it look so easy because now. You look at it and you say, "Oh, Bam! You know he should have done that, or 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 oh, that was easy, or or whatever." But like I said, Pedro Guevara had never had a a stoppage loss. Um, all his losses, split decisions, majority decisions. He's a former world champ. He's always been around the picture. I I knew who I personally knew who he was already. Uh, Chepe knew who he was. We we had seen him fight before. Uh, Chepe had brought him up to me a long time ago. Um, I think when he not when he became world champ because that was that was, that was a while back, but. He had been in, in 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 high level fights against world champs, and you know he had been in really good fights, and we've seen him fight before. Um, so when he fought Maloney, um, I watched the fight. I saw it live, like I was watching it and stuff. I thought he did he did beat Maloney. It was a close fight, but um, he kind of he kind of caught a break on that one because he had suffered, like I said, split decision losses, majority decision losses, and stuff like that. And the Maloney fight was close, and it was in Maloney's hometown. And I thought he won, and they did end up giving him decision, which was cool. It was kind of like the the breakthrough moment, of, uh, you know, for him. And finally, you know, he gets the the close decision. Um, how did Bam make it look that easy? Because we saw in the main event, those these kind of fights are kind of um, dangerous to take because you really don't have anything to gain from beating some of these guys sometimes. But you have to have a sensational performance to just to you know make it you know so people forget about you know that oh it's just a mandatory you know um talk to you a little bit about bam's actual performance well bam you know bam is always ready you know he's too trained he trained very hard he prepared himself very well so that that has a lot to do with it but uh you know he does what what uh, you know he did what uh what champions what what fighters in that level have to do you know uh especially when when it's an opponent that very, people don't know much about, but you know he's tough. You know he's he's been in tough fights. You have to go out there and, and show that that you're just that you're the champion and that he's you know Bam Bam did what what uh what champions need to do, especially especially with a guy that's that strong, that solid, that uh, that's never been stopped, that's you know always lost close decisions against world class fighters. He went out there and showed that there's just levels to this that he's that he's up there with. You know, with the best in the world, you know, he performed like, like you know, pound for pound, uh, pound for pound star. The actual stoppage, the actual stoppage when he did that little pivot in the uppercut, um, it's stuff that 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 we work on, but not just with Bam. Like we do stuff like that with with a lot of guys. I don't think people, I mean, people don't see it in the gym, 
but we try to teach guys to do that. We've always done it. We've, you know, that's something that, that you used to do as a fighter. Um, and you've tried to implement that with, with, with your guys and, you know, the, the footwork and trying to do it, but not everybody pulls that kind of, like nobody pulls, not just not anybody, nobody pulls that kind of stuff off. Cause like I said, we try it with, with everybody. Obviously there's some guys that we don't do it with. There's some guys whose style just doesn't fit doing stuff like that. They can't do it. You know what I mean? It just doesn't fit their, their style, but we do try to teach that with a lot of guys. How, how is Bam able to do that so easily? Because he seems, he seems to do something different every single time he fights that you're like, how the fuck, like, how do you do that? Like, you know, um, what is it that, that, that allows him? Cause like I said, you used to do it too. When you used to fight, you used to do the pivots and stuff like that. What, what is it about Bam that, that he's able to pull that off in the fights that other guys just can't do it? Look, see, he feels very comfortable doing it. He does it in the gym and it's something natural to him. You know, he, uh, he, uh, he sees what I'm, you know, when I'm explaining to him, he knows what I'm talking about. And for him, it's something that he, you know, he could do very easily. Others don't get, don't feel very but it's also easy for you to tell him and stuff because, like I said, you used to be able to do stuff like that too. Like you, you would practice those and you would do those, so you could kind of see, like, hey, you know what, do this, do that. And for him, it just clicks. Like it's really easy for him yeah, because he's already, you know, because he was like that since he was a kid too. He already had that footwork. He already had that 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 talent. I think it's something that uh, that sometimes you know you have to either practice, practice to be able to get it, or you just natural at it. You, it's gonna come out of the first time. The first time you practice it, you know, there's combinations. We've talked about, you know, so many combinations that I've, uh, that, that I try to teach my fighters left hook followed by a left uppercut or, or, or a lefty, southpaw, right hook, southpaw, southpaw, yeah. right hook followed by left uppercut. And, and I teach, I try to teach it to every one of my left and only Victor <laughs> Ortiz used to do it, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, very few do it, you know, or, or right uppercut left to the body yeah. and chop cha does it very chop well, chop. you know. And I told every, I, I I practice that with everybody. Right uppercut, left to the body, and uh, and chop chop does it very fucking very good, you know. So bam with the footwork for him is something that comes out easy, something that's natural for him. He just has that that ability, you know, to do it, you know, uh, that footwork uh, that that uh, he's able to do it. Uh, it's just in him already, you know. It's something that uh, since he was a kid, we've seen that in him, and uh, we just have to practice it. And 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 he and he's gonna do it because for him. It's something very comfortable. It's not, it's not something that's going. He doesn't have to think be, about it. He just does it. Yeah, he's, it's not going to be something that's going to be uncomfortable for him. For him, it's going to be simple. It's not going to. It might not work with other guys, but it works with him very easy. Uh, where do you think? Where, what do you think is next for Bam? Um, you know, this week we got a lot of talk about the Chocolatito. Um, Chocolatito, somebody that Bam has said that he doesn't want to fight. Mister Honda, the uh, who promotes or yeah, who promotes both of them, has said he doesn't want to see that fight. Chocolatito himself had said what. Well, I don't think he ever said that he didn't want it or he wouldn't take it, but he just never pushed it or whatever. But before his last fight, he brought, you know, somebody brought it up to him during fight week and he said he would, he would, he would be willing to fight Bam. That's kind of how everything got brought up again. Chocolatito himself said it. Um, and now Bam seems to have said, you know what, if he wants to do it, then I'm not going to say no. You know what I mean? Um, if, if, if he's the one that says it, um, but I think you, for you and for Bam and for the whole team and everybody, a uni unification would probably be next if, if it was up to us. What do you think is next, and um, what is your like preference? Yeah, that that you know, Chocolatito versus Bam will not be our first choice. Even though it will be a great fight, and they would be awesome to share their own with Chocolatito and 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 be able to compete and fight, and you know, uh, all four kings of the you know super flyweights. But uh, but unifications is 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 what we're going after. Bam, Bam wants to unify. Bam. Bam's plan was to become undisputed next year, but you know now that Puma got stripped by the ABF, now it's you know it's one fight more, so it might take a little bit longer, or or might not be able to do it because of the timing. Uh, maybe by by the end of next year, Bam is gonna want to be at one eighteen already. So so we'll we'll see how it works, but uh, but I think unification is our first um our first choice. That's what we're gonna try to go after. There's uh you know there there's a champion uh uh Kafu is that his name? Uh, that just became champion. He just fought uh, a few a uh, few weeks he, he ago. He beat Tanaka for the day. Yeah, he beat Tanaka like a month ago. So I think he's probably could be available. We also have a Japanese uh, champion. Also, no, no, I don't no. know. No, no, not a Japanese champion. Tanaka was the Japanese champion. He lost. Oh, okay, he lost. Okay. The other and one would Puma. be the IBF is going to be vacant, and they're supposed to be fighting for it. 
sometime in December in Japan. Uh, right, two Mexico. 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 I don't that's know the right. names, two, but two, two guys, guys from Mexico. Mexico that are and then Puma, fight. but Puma has a fight. Puma has a fight, you know, so Puma Puma has a fight end of December. So so if, if our plan is to fight early next year, February, March, maybe Puma's not, is not going to be, the, you know, available because we have to wait. They can't, you know, Matchroom can't start working on a fight with Puma right now when he still has something, you know, he, you know, he still has a fight coming up December, December 31st. And that's already end of the year where by that time, Matchroom should already have an opponent, should already have the, you know, the, 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 the fight lined up, you know, uh, so Puma, you know, might not be till maybe, summer or something like that but uh and and that's if he wins uh as of right now i think i think um if they could do the 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 two mexicans that are fighting for the vacant ibf soon maybe that's something that could happen or 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 kafu kafu is, is you know is, is one that makes more sense but we'll see we'll see what match wants to do uh we want to push for the unification that's what bam wants so let's let's hope they they could get it together we move on to the main event where we saw Jerron Boots Ennis pick up a, a another unanimous decision win over Karen. I'm not even gonna pretend like I could pronounce his last name. Um, the first fight went the distance, kind of an uh, a boring fight. The uh, Boots's opponent decided to move and make it a difficult fight. Um, this time around, he switched it up a little bit. He fought on the inside, made it ugly, made it rough, a lot of holding, uh, just uh, a sneaky kind of awkward kind of guy. Again, goes his decision with Boots. Boots was able to drop him in the fifth round, but couldn't couldn't get the the stoppage. What did you think about Boots's performance? And do you think the fact that the first fight went to distance, the fact that it went to distance, and he had so much pressure and everybody in his head about how he didn't perform the way he should have the first time, do you think that affected his performance? Because you know he was getting hit a lot with a lot of stuff that we normally wouldn't see Boots get hit with. Um, probably didn't have the performance that he or his team would want. Uh, what did you think about the whole the whole thing? Well, I think it's 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 one of those one of those fights where where there is pressure. You already went the distance with that guy. Everybody expecting you to win by knockout, and uh, and you and, and everybody expecting you to do it in the in, in the rematch. Um, your corner is actually pushing you to get him out, of, get this guy out of the way, knock him out, knock him out. Uh, the hometown crowd. Uh, Everything going on during the week, I think I think it had a lot to do with it with his performance. I don't think it was it was his best performance. He got hit a lot, but I think it was just one of those nights where where it does affect those fighters that are fighting uh, that fight in their hometown. There's fighters that don't care, don't care, you know. We just talked about Keyshawn Davis, uh, but it could have been a problem, you know, especially again that against a guy that he already beat by decision, and everybody expecting you to to go out there and knock him out. Uh, you know, focus too much on that, where it cost him a few punches that land landed on him. Um, you know, so it's it's one of those performances where where doesn't mean much. You know, doesn't mean he's he's not ready for the big guys. Doesn't mean he can't compete against the big guys. But it does leave a question for for all the the boxing critics. Yeah, I, I, there was a lot of criticism online, like on Twitter and, and Instagram. I saw of his dad and in, 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 in between rounds. Um his dad has always been has always done a great job with them. You know, obviously he's a great fighter because of his dad. His dad is his his head coach has done a great job with them. I think I think everything leading up to this fight of the stuff that happened with Brian Norman with the he was supposed to have a unification. He didn't get that. Um the IBF making you know this guy the mandatory again or, or, or making him the mandatory and Boots has to fight him again. The first fight was underwhelming. There was a lot of pressure to get the TKO, and I think that kind of affected, I think, the way his dad was working the corner because he, he was pushing a lot for the knockout. Like, he was just telling him, come on, get him out of there, get him out of there. And he kept bringing that up, like, nonstop. When normally, when you listen to, to Bozy and Ennis, uh, Bozy Ennis in the corner, he's usually a little bit more calm. He's, you know, giving, you know, better instructions. I think just everything played a, played a factor, and that's why... You know, he kind of he kind of had the uh, the uh, performance that he did. But, you know, that's why these kind of guys are, are, are dangerous. You know, these guys, um, like I said, they got nothing to lose. They go in there and they don't care if they make it an ugly fight. If they're, you know, if, if they, they get booed out of the arena, fuck it. They're not the main event. They're not the, the headlining fight. It's up to Boots to perform and stuff. And, you know, this time we, we, we didn't get to see, uh, you know, a spectacular performance from him. Um how do you think Boots does? Uh, well, 
Afterwards, he said there might be a possibility of him going up to 154, but Eddie Hearn in the post-fight press conference still said that their their number one goal would be to to unify. Um, with the performance that he just had, how do you think he does against the other champs at, at 147? Because you got Mario Barrios with the WBC, Stanionis with the WBA, and Brian Norman with the WBO, which are all different styles, different, you know, different, uh, yeah, all different styles, but all good good world champs. How do you think he would do against any of those guys? Well, I think, I think he's performed very well in, on, on previous fights. He's shown, you know, people have been talking about him being the, the, the next superstar and, 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 uh, cause he's had great performances. I think this last performance doesn't, doesn't really, uh, mean much to where we might think, oh, he's not ready or he's not going to be able to compete against any of the top guys. I think it was also just like, like finding his hometown, the pressure of knocking this guy out affected him. I think it also affected the dad because the dad was also pushing for it. So it wasn't just one, it was both that I think I had pressure to to win by knockout. So I think I think it was just one of those bad nights and didn't perform well. But I think he's you know he's still probably the best welterweight out there. I think he's still the best welterweight. And and if the plans are to move up to where I think he'll compete uh, at 154 also. He's big enough, he's talented enough. Uh this performance you know, doesn't doesn't mean that he's not ready for those guys. I think it was just one of those performances where, where not just him, but the dad, the the hometown, the crowd, the rematch. Now you got to knock him out. I think it, it it affected his performance, but that doesn't mean, you know, we've seen great performances in the past against solid names, against great names, and he's performed very well. So I think he'll continue to do the same uh, after this one. How, who, if you could pick one other welterweight, the other from the world champs in, in, in for a fight, just like off what you would like to see, who would you pick for him to fight? Because you know, Stanion is the, the Norman, the yeah. other champions. I, I, I think, uh, Norman, I would like to see him again. Norman, Norman, Norman is solid, he's a great guy, good fighter, very strong. That would be a great unification fight. I'd like to see Stanionis. Stanionis is a warrior, like man. Stanionis. but me personally. As you know, as uh, you know, I like see, I, because I, like I already to... see Norman, and I already you know we went against him, and 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 I think he's a great fighter. Also, his team were great and everything. So I would like to, I, I would like to see him fight, fight up. I think the ideal thing would be for because they're both with PBC and stuff to get Stanionis versus Barrios. Yes, get Stanionis Barrios WBC WBA. Barrios has a fight coming up, I think, this weekend, this Friday or Saturday on yeah, the right. Jake Paul card. Um. Get that, get a fight like that, and then boots and Norman, and then get you know, obviously, like, yeah. that would be like the ideal that thing. That would be great, you know. Stanionis and Barrios work with PBC and stuff, so that should be something that should be easy to make. Uh, Norman and boots had already had negotiations. I don't know what Norman's problem is and his team and stuff, not taking you know, 1.7 million dollars to fight boots and stuff, but those would be the like, I think the ideal situations. But I think if you gave me just one guy that I think would. Would be, I think, a fight of the year type of fight would be, I think, Stanionis. I like Stanionis. Oh, Stanionis would put up a great fight, you know. But I, I would like to see, I would like to see uh, the fight between uh, Boots and uh, and Norman. I, I know, I know, they're both very, very good fighters, very technical, and uh, you know, Norman is very strong, man, very strong guy. So it's it's a good fight. During the week, we also got the Oscar De La Hoya famous clap back Thursday uh, to Eddie Hearn, and you know, he does his 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 thing on instagram where you know everybody knows everybody watches it um he called out a five versus five golden boy versus matchroom you know I, I won't get into the under the fights underneath but the main event he brought up uh virgil ortiz versus jaron ennis um is that a real possibility is that something that's been brought up like you know since every since everything this week and all the people going back and forth because both he did say that that virgil was offered it or whatever and virgil said no Virgil came on Twitter right away and said, I've never been offered that fight. And we know he hasn't been offered it. But since all that stuff has happened, is that something that's a possibility now for February 22nd in Saudi Arabia? Well, that would be, that would be great. Hopefully they do. Hopefully Oscar and Eddie do talk about it. And uh, and they do uh, they do put it together because it would be a great fight, man. You know, uh, I don't know. You know, Eddie did mention that he would like to hit, he would like uh, Boots to stay at 147 and unify. Maybe that's already he's having second thoughts about moving him up to 154, but uh, it would be great. You know, he did bring up, you know, the five and five, and he's also said that if you know 
him him versus versus Oscar, you know, we joked about we joked around about it. I told him, you know, that you know that Oscar's you know a great yeah. fighter and Oscar would probably beat him up. He's like, Well, how about what if you train me? Like, are you paying me 10%? Yeah. <laughs> so you know, we joked about it. So I guess there there is interest in that. There is, it is possible. So be great. Hopefully they could sit down together and uh and uh work it out because it would be great. You know, there's uh you know, there's plenty of time to 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 make the the whole show happen. And then, you know, February twenty second would be unbelievable, man. It would be a great show. Yeah, the, the card that they said um was the obviously Virgil versus Boots headlining. It would have Camarón Cepeda versus Shakur Stevenson. Mungia versus, but I, but I don't know why Oscar keeps saying Mungia. Mungia's with top rank. I don't know what his problem is. They know that Mungia's not with Golden Boy. That he's with top rank for a few fights. So, um, Mungia versus who did they say? Mungia versus Pacheco. Versus Pacheco. Fuck, that would be sick. I think Pacheco would stop him. Um, then they had uh Jack the versus the winner of Jose and and Arnold yeah. Barbosa. Yeah. And then who was the last one? Duarte versus Haney. Duarte versus Haney. Fuck. Yeah. Who's opening up that show? God damn. I know that shit would be that's crazy. a crazy. That's a crazy show. But um, if they are able to do something, I don't think that that would be. But the Eddie also show. said that he he's not with with Haney, but they'll bring it up to Haney. Yeah, I I I don't think that that card would would work out exactly like they said it. I think the 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 three fights that are real possibilities would be obviously the main event, Jerron and Virgil. I think that's like a, like you could say that one, you know, they could do it. They're both with the people. I think Shakur versus Camarón Cepeda is a real possibility. Shakur has said that that they had already agreed to it. I think Catterall versus the winner of, of Bar Barbosa and Ramirez. I think that those three are, are cool. Mungia is not with Golden Boy, so I don't know why Oscar keeps saying that. So they would need to replace him with somebody else. And then I think Devin Haney versus Duarte wouldn't, you know, obviously Duarte has a fight coming up this weekend and stuff, but Devin Haney's not with Matchroom. Um, and I don't think Devin Haney is the kind of guy that would go into a, a show like that and be like the third fight on the card. You know what I mean? He won't be above, he won't yeah. be above, above some of those guys. So yeah, but I, they don't need those. I, th I think just those top three that you mentioned, it's already a great card, man. It's yeah. already a great card. They could already, they could, they could. They yeah. Could, but the, if they, they could they fill could out with like two another more two guys. On the card that are, that could be very similar. I got one. I got Bam. One. Bam no, no, could no. fight on that card. But, but Golden Boy doesn't have any 115 pounders. That's crappy. Get the fuck. Stop. <laughs> That's crappy. <laughs> the fuck, Peter? I don't even think he's still with them. No, that, but. That'd be a fucking badass fight. What about, what about Andy Cruz versus Floyd Schofield? Yeah. Andy Cruz with Matchroom. Floyd Schofield's with, with, with Golden Boy. Yeah. And then. They could go Oscar. Yeah, that's the perfect one. Obviously, if Duarte, you know, obviously Duarte has to fight. If everything goes good, they have other 140 pounders that they that they could go. I've been reading online that they might be signing uh Josh Taylor. Or, you know what I mean? Like they could they could make something work with 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 somebody else, you know. Um oh no, but that's not but the Josh thing. Taylor's a 147. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Josh Taylor's a welterweight, golden boys welterweights are like Alexis Rocha, maybe. Um He's fighting Raul Curiel, but that's in December, so that would be too quick of a turnaround. I'm just trying to think of other uh, of other guys that. Who's trying? To, Eddie Hearn's trying to sign Josh Taylor. I I've read that he signed him. Well, but they haven't announced nice. him yet. We'll get the rematch with Jose and what through it. Yeah, I've I've read. Oh yeah, there it is. That's something I've that read. we could do. And and Catterall could fight Oscar Duarte. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that'd be a badass card. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be a sick ass card if they were able to do something like that. That'd be nice. Yeah, very good fights. Hopefully they do something like that. But yeah, I, I think Floyd Schofield versus Andy Cruz would be good. No? Yeah, that one's that one's perfect. They should do it. So you don't like you don't like Bam versus Crappy? Well, that that does it for him. I'm just kidding. No, nah, but that that is uh it that is all we were gonna talk about with all the actual fights from this past weekend and stuff. Um, this w upcoming weekend, obviously, we have Jose Ramirez fighting Arnold Barbosa in Saudi Arabia with Oscar Duarte fighting Batir Akhmedov. It was supposed to be Ken Sims. Ken Sims pulled out with a knee injury, I believe. Um, Batir Akhmedov comes in. He lost to Ken Sims in a, in a close fight recently. Um, he's had a, a few close decision losses that didn't go his way, but tough dude, southpaw, big puncher. 
It should be a great a great fight. You take off tomorrow morning, so uh, make sure you guys tune into that. But that does it for this week's episode. Uh, we will see you guys next next week with Veba back again. Uh, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.